Hello, 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 and welcome back to some more Rune Factory 2. As I recall from the end of the last episode, we have to go to the winter area and check out the farm up there. Whew. Today is just another one of those kind of low energy type days that I've been having quite a lot of lately, honestly. Eek! Looks like that has already been watered. So let's just work back home. He's up roughly half of our energy and everything will be good. Honestly, I wouldn't be recording right now if it weren't for that. I kind of have to. <coughs> oh god. But since I have to, I mean, might as well. Hello, Cinnamon. Little old Dracula kitty. Cinnamon and Monica. Cinnabon? Oh, hello, Cinnabon. That, that, that was the one that, he, that my cat reacted to, was me calling him Cinnabon. No real awesome stories lately. I finally got uh, off of the uh, buzz that I had a few days ago of winning a CD each game with Platinum Angel. So now everything's all just back to normal as it were. Well, back to normal. There's an inspection tomorrow. I did some cleaning already. The rest of the cleaning is basically cleaning up the kitchen, which I'll do tonight as I... As I make stew for tomorrow, I'll also clean up the kitchen. Right? Everything is fine. I believe all of the other areas have already been taken care of, just fine, so... Oh, no. That's a full rune bar that has to be taken care of. Uh, but yeah. Play the game of CDH, I think, like, the other day. Or whatever. Maybe yesterday? Yeah, I think yesterday. <laughs> Gosh, where does time go? Uh, four of us in the game. Eventually, one player left because they had to, because they'd only had 40 minutes to play. They had said that at the beginning. They wound up leaving. I had basically just been getting lands and mana rocks all game, including the Celestis to let me, you know, join to more lands and mana rocks <laughs> and slowly start gaining life one player cast a cyclonic rift <laughs> overloaded as all like all right i'm good with that oh yeah float a bit of mana then oh by the way let me just flash out my commander flash out a veldican orrery flash out out uh, mana vault you know, flashing a few more things, including the Celestis again. Gain a bunch of life. Oh, by the way, during the end step, you die. <laughs> now, see, if I really wanted to push the advantage as far as I could, I would have let it go to the next player's turn, then used uh, Vel Veldican Ori, Aether Flux Reservoir, Thori. To finish off that player because it would have changed to day for their turn. Then if I defeat them and they don't cast any spells, then it would change to night for my turn. But instead of doing that, I just decided, you know what? Finish them off because they have no mana right now. <laughs> and that's a good thing because they had a redirect in their hand that they could have cast if they had been able to untap. So, turns out... Going for the faster win was the smarter thing to do. Yeah. And then on my turn, you know, untap a whole bunch. 
upkeep draw. I'm just yeah, swing to take out the other player's planeswalker because now it's just down to one v one. So I figured take that down. I'm at like eight life. They're at like thirty. It's like I can't. I have three cards in hand. I have like the Van Dynamo and a Solvay are <laughs> two of the three cards in my hand, and the third one isn't about to win me the game right now. It's like, okay, well, I could gain maybe six or seven life by casting them. That's nowhere near enough. So let's just keep them in hand and see what happens. So player goes and they go like, I... <laughs> like, they have, like, nothing but lands on the board. I basically have nothing but mana. The, uh... The Aetherflux. I keep wanting to call it the Vidalcan. Mana and Aetherflux... And like a 2-3 command or something, or a 3-4, whatever. And then you go, alright, sure. Thos is Oracle in, res in response to ETB. X on my entire library. And it's like, oh yeah. And because that's a common win the game combo in CEDH. There are wait, stop. There are two black instants. One that allows you to Exile card from the top of your deck. You may put it into your hand. If you choose not to, repeat this process until you either put a card into your hand this way, or two cards with the same name have been exiled, whichever comes first. So they play, you know, it's a singleton format. They don't run any two cards of the same name, not even basic lands. So they can just exile until they either get whatever card they need for a situation, like a counterspell, or just go until they have no cards left in the library. And Thassa's Oracle, when it ETBs, you reveal cards to the top of your library equal to your Devotion to Blue, and it costs blue-blue, so that's at least two Devotion to Blue right there. Uh, was it choose one of them to it's either put in hand or leave on top, and the rest go on the bottom. Uh, but, if your Devotion to Blue is equal to or greater than the number of cards in your library, instead, you win the game. So, put it in, have that ETB trigger go on the stack, and then just go, oh, I'll just win the game. <laughs> the ETB trigger on the stack, exile their library, they win the game. Uh, the card that they use to exile their library instead was the other one, which was choose a card name, exile cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card with that name, or you just exile your entire library. So you pick something like Black Lotus, something you don't have in your deck. <laughs> and then, boom, exile everything, and then immediately, you know, still win with Thassa's Oracle. And this guy had a counter spell backup. He had like two cards in hand, and I could just tell that one of them was a counter spell. He was waiting for me to do something so he could counter it so he could still get the win. I didn't have any of my fancy lands, so let me, uh... That looks so weird. I didn't have any of my fancy lands in hand that would let me, uh... Make, every... make them draw a card. The sawing in my hand wasn't going to win the game. The Thran Dynamo in my hand wasn't going to win me the game. The third card in my hand, I tapped down all of my mana to uh, toss it out. Maybe I should have done the sawing first, maybe not. Oh well. But I figured it's like, okay, if they have a counter spell for this, there's nothing I can do anyway. So I'm going to flash out a platinum angel. <laughs> and for those aren't, who aren't in the know, uh, platinum angel is a 7 mana 4-4 four, four artifact creature. You can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Uh, and I thought it was really funny because the chosen card that the other player had chosen for their, you know, to exile their library with was you are already dead. Just the extra theming. And then I flash out a Platinum Angel. And their counter spell could not counter a creature spell. Could specifically only counter a non-creature spell. 
so they're like, well, I can't stop you from stopping me anymore. Because I didn't just run, you know, a counter spell or a stifle or whatever. It's like, no, you get your ability. It just doesn't work. <laughs> your ability can resolve, but is that really all you need? <laughs> it's just like, the guy was just stunned for a good little while. Like, <laughs> he didn't know what he was supposed to do about that. He wasn't expecting a Platinum Angel as a counter. And now he has no more cards in his library. A counter spell and one other apparently not too useful card in his hand is the only things in his hand. So he's like, well, yes I lose. <laughs> and I'm just there like, I suppose you do, huh? Okay, what do we do now? <laughs> Yeah, just like going through the game slowly, like getting extra life, one life point by one life point with the Celestis, just just waiting, just growing, just waiting. <laughs> I had the Aether Flux Reservoir in my hand for like the longest time. And it's just like, okay, just waiting until I get to like 51 life. They could flash it in, try to kill an opponent. You know, if I have to do trickery stuff here. And... <laughs> I mean, hey, it worked. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Yeah, playing a Colour CDH deck, people really underestimate what I'm able to do. And they don't seem to realize that if I can flash in all of my cards, <laughs> I can do anything I want whenever I want. Essentially. If I just sit there and I wait, maybe flash out a card or two just before my turn, just increase my board slowly, and if someone tries to do something I don't like, I stop them. Where it's like, an opponent casting, like, a wheel is, like, nine times out of ten really good for me. And if I have some cheap mana rocks, solving mana crypt, mana vault, grim monolith, even, then someone overloading a cyclonic crypt can actually help me. It's like, okay, sure, I'll float some mana off my mana rocks, return these cards to my hand, recast my commander, Flash back all of these mana rocks again. Flash back. Flash out all of these mana rocks again. Flash back. Kind of actually works for that, but that's a different mechanic. Oh, and for those of you still concerned, yes, I already did some cleaning on for the inspection tomorrow. Um. Yeah. Taking out the trash... Technically, there is a bag of, like, furniture, wood pieces, whatever. That is, it, it, it's just too heavy for me to reasonably carry down on my own. It is 
like, really heavy. So if they try to yell at me, it's like, oh, you have, like, this bag of trash here. I'm like, yeah, I can't carry it down. Could you help me? <laughs> and if they try to get me about that, then, I don't know, like, pretty sure it's over 50 pounds. Like, I... Like, it's not safe for me to just carry that downstairs by myself. Plus, it's winter! <laughs> the sidewalks and the road are very slippery. It's not safe for me to be... Like, even if I were to take the risk of, you know, carrying down, like, oh, use the elevator, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, it would have to be, you know using both hands and unable to watch my step. So if I step on an ice patch carrying 50 pounds of lumber, I'm in a very, very bad state right there. <laughs> Plus I probably have a good 40, maybe $50 worth of uh, balls and stuff to bring to the depot. But that can wait for spring, because that's all in, like, the extra, like, storage, side room, whatever. Not Monday. This wasn't open yet. Hi, you. No, why would I? I hung out with my mom yesterday. We went, like, shopping and stuff, and we're gonna hang out again this weekend. Go out. Maybe watch a movie or something. Bake some cookies. Apparently she's already seen, like, episode one, or at least half of episode one, of uh, the Has-Been Hotel. <laughs> and... See, so, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> but she... But she watched it, like, with my little brother, who is, uh, yeah, a bit young for the, uh, content that is shown on that program. It's like, I'm just surprised, because... They have the Amazon, whatever, Amazon stream movies and shows, whatever thing, Amazon Direct, whatever it was, whatever it's called. And apparently they are just looking through for stuff to see and then they watch that and, and it's like, this is not, it's like, this is animated, but it's not a kid's show. <laughs> and I'm just laughing at just the, the two of them just watching it together, like, yeah, this isn't appropriate. My attack didn't increase. Too bad. My health is decent, though. People have asked me. Actually, no. Nobody's bothered to ask me before. I imagine that people would be curious about why I continue to insist on doing these recordings, even though I have, you know, more important stuff to do on some days. You know, like cleaning for an inspection tomorrow. And it's like, yeah, it's just an hour, but it's still like an hour that I could be, you know, scrubbing the baseboards or whatever. And it's like. I know for certain that if I decide to just not do an episode, if I just decide, no, it's too much, it's like, no, I'm too busy, I'll just not, I'll just not do it. Once I break that barrier and skip an episode the first time, it'll become so much easier to just skip an episode some other time. I just go, it's like, eh, I don't really want to play more Room Factory. Yeah, I'll just not do that. It, it's fine. It's fine. And then just go right back down to a case of how about I just stop playing games? And yeah, I've been in that depressive state before and it's not something I really like. 
So it feels like I would rather play games that I don't like to play than to not play games that I do like to play. I'd rather just keep... It's like, yeah, I know I get bored of doing Rune Factory and Baldur's Gate so constantly, but I'd rather keep playing with them than to not. Like, I could go down to just, you know, one video a day instead and just have, you know, the other weekly things, but even then, some of those games are meh. Which reminds me, I still have to record something new for Friday, so that will be a new recording done tomorrow. No, wait, no, I already recorded that. I recorded something with Kazura, that's right. So, might have to do something different for Saturday, depends on blah 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 and all that, but it's like, you know what? Basically, you take a one hour break, record this episode, and then set this video up to upload, and then as this video is, you know, uploading, go and do more cleaning. I separated all of my, like, tasks that I should do for the inspection into seven jobs. I completed four of them before I started doing the recording. <laughs> So, and basically, the two that I, rem that I still have left, that I remember right now, are to clean the kitchen counters, and to make sure all the dishes are washed. And considering I'm potentially going to be making stew tonight, I can do that while I'm making the stew. Or after I make the stew, because it's... Making the stew tends to dirty up the counters and also lead to some stuff that needs to be washed anyway. <laughs> and I did clean a few dishes earlier today, but can't finish cleaning the dishes until I've finished dirtying all the dishes that will need to be cleaned eventually, you know? I guess I should wait for you to be done. Oof. I also really need to charge my phone. It's at like 2%. All well, the other tasks I needed to do. And I did that. Need to do that. Need to do that. Did that. Oh wait. Toss the bag of like wood scrap is the other thing that I need to do, which, as mentioned, I can't do on my own uh, safely. <laughs> it's like, technically speaking, I could do it. I can't do it safely, and safety is what's really important. Oh, also, I saw the almost completed backpack that my mom's been making for me, and that was supposed to be, like, a Christmas gift, but it's been, like, delayed and delayed until... I should be getting it this weekend, and it is nice. <laughs> she put her, like, logo right on it and wound up giving me, like, a small stack of her business cards that I could, like, give out to people. And it's like, you know what? It's like, she's really letting the quality of her work speak for itself, honestly, and... Yeah, I can't fault that. So... For any of you out there want a really high quality, like, bag, backpack, or purse, or messenger bag, or carry-on bag, whatever, uh, Carberry Customs. I don't know if there's a website, I don't know if they'll precisely come up if you Google it, I just know that that's what she's on. I don't know if she has an Etsy page, because I haven't actually looked at the business cards that she gave me. She makes some good stuff. It's expensive, but it, it's like the boot uh, allegory, the, the poor man's boots. 
where it's like, okay, well, you could spend $10 on a cheap, cheap pair of boots that won't even keep your feet dry and will just disintegrate in a year. Or you could spend like $50 on a really nice pair of boots that will absolutely keep your feet dry and will still be perfectly fine 10 years down the road. So it's like, alright, do you want to pay like $10 for just a cheap, cheap purse that's going to fall apart after maybe a year? Maybe at most two years of use. Or do you want to pay, say, it's not $50, it'd be like $300 for a purse that 10 years down the line is still going to be awesome. Now, to be fair, I mean, I, so I used to basically collect, acquire, whatever, like, second, like, purses from secondhand stores. So it'd be like $5 for a purse, but if I try to, like, authentically use it every day, would usually break after a few months. So yeah, $10 a year for purses versus, you know, a $300 purse that actually looks good, won't break down, and will keep your stuff safe. Like, I've been using my current purse for, I want to say five years, but I don't think I've actually had it for five years. I don't remember when I got it, because I think I was still living in this apartment when I got it. So it can't have been five years. But I feel like it's still been like four. <laughs> and it did need a little bit of fixing up at one point. That is fair. But also, it's really good quality. <laughs> like, I'm sure I'm going to wind up using it for 10 more years at least. And plus, that was. One I'm using was more of a practice purse. Now she's much better at uh, actually making them. Who knows? You want a fancy purse that'll last you 30 years? Yeah. Uh, contact me back in a decade and I'll let you know whatever happened to the backpack. It's a, it's a big bag and it's me to carry. It's me to be able to store big things in there. <laughs> like, yeah, I wish I could have been able to bring it down to... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I really need... really need to uh, start testing out, like, its way thing. Because, like, let's see. If I bring the, uh, the Grimoire... That's like, what, eight commander decks in there, maybe ten. Throw in some boulders, throw in a playmat, heck, throw in a second playmat. Heck, maybe you get like a little slight adjustment to it, because there's like side, like outside pockets. Get a playmat put, put into there, get a little strap to hold the playmat in place. It's made for water bottles, and it can store some thick water bottles. Oh yeah, also I got myself a new water bottle. It's metal. I like the metal water bottles. Much uh, nicer than plastic. Also, this is like a thermos. You can store hot things hot or cold stuff cold. Mining level 94. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figure after I set this to upload, I'll go and clean up the kitchen. Then, I don't know. You know, with the Zora, because she's probably just about home now, although I haven't really heard from her today, which is kind of unusual. I really need to get into good habits. Whenever I leave the... Whenever I leave a room, bring something with me that shouldn't be in the room to bring to where it's supposed to go. Yeah, like, 
Right, leaves the bed. Right, leaves the bedroom. Bring, I don't know, an empty water bottle with, with me, and at the very least, leave it in the kitchen. Don't necessarily have to fill it up and put it back in the fridge. Just put it, you know, by the sink, so I know to fill it up. If I leave the living room, bring like some dishes with me into the kitchen. At least put them in the sink, even if I don't wash them immediately, like that sort of thing. Hey, you got enough uh, food for the animals that yet? Alright. Also, I've been having this maybe bad habit of waking up or at least getting out of bed at like noonish. <laughs> Which is really awkward when people start trying to make plans for like morning, and I'm like, yeah, in the morning I'm still asleep. I'm up until like four doing nothing. I wake up at like noon. <laughs> Which is only bad, but it works for me, blah blah blah. Mostly because Azura has been wanting to. It used to be that Azura would go to bed at midnight. Whatever we're doing, like, go to bed somewhere from midnight to 1 a.m. And I could stay up till about 2 or 3, maybe do some VR, you know, make some stew, do some VR, go to bed. But now Azura is willing to stay up till about 3 or 4 in the morning, and which is... <laughs> so if I want to, you know, make some stew, do some VR, then go to bed, I'd be going to bed at like 6 or 7, <laughs> maybe? Well, okay, making stew takes like maybe half an hour, VR is like an hour, so... Probably not quite that bad, but still kind of bad. So it's like... And it's like, oh, well, why don't you... It's like, I don't want to make the stew earlier, so I make the stew like... Because I, you know, I eat the stew over the course of the day. And I make it just before I go to sleep, so I can have a bit of a sensation of, like, okay, you just did something, you deserve a bit of rest, kind of thing for, like... But also, so the stew is ready in the morning. If I make it, like, say, 4 p.m., then it's ready at, like, midnight. <laughs> and if I... So I need to make it at, like, you know, if I make it at 4 a.m., it's ready at, like, noon when I wake up. Like, that's the mentality of it. That is the why of it. I wish I went down to the South Island and I did all that stuff, so all that is fine. Oh yeah, it's end of summer already. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's always so annoying whenever inspections happen. I never know if I'm going to get the... Oh, good, there isn't, you know... There aren't rats crawling all about the place, so you're good type of inspectors. Or the, oh well, I know you mopped the floor, but it left streaks and you failed type of inspectors. And it's like, I don't know if the place smells really bad, because, you know, I'm used to the place, and like, even if I, you know, spend time elsewhere to get used to different smells and then walk in, I don't smell anything bad. <laughs> 
But then someone comes in, it's like, oh, it reeks of ammonia. It's like, oh yeah, it turns out, again, <laughs> it turns out I'm like a ball of hair dye. Bro, imagine if I actually, like, dyed my hair. The specter comes like, oh, it reeks of ammonia, how terrible, blah, 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 and I just point to my bright pink hair, like. You think they had to evict me? <laughs> just for dyeing my hair? Like, this seems ridiculous, but I almost went and put it past them. So I haven't dyed my hair uh, <laughs> for quite a while now. I was going to get my hair like professionally treated at one point because I saw a thing that could like perm my straight in hair. Some sort of a treatment you could do to like curly hair and get it like fixed and be and uh, the hair would be straight until, you know, new hair grows in, because the new hair would grow in curly. But the specific hair that I got treated would stay straight. And I went to go get that, and then it turned out since I had bleached my hair, and the bleach, like, hadn't fully like, grown out, been cut out yet, it could make my hair fall out. So I was advised to not get that treatment done. And then by the time that, you know, my hair had grown out enough and I completely cut out the parts that had been bleached, I wasn't interested in getting it done anymore. Which, it is kind of stupid that when I, you know, called the hairdresser's place to book the appointment to get it done, they didn't ask a question like, oh, hey, had, have you had your hair bleached? Like, you know. It's like, oh, well then we recommend that you don't do it, but tell me if you still want it, as long as you're aware that your hair will probably fall out, we can still do it. And I'd be like, oh, in that case, no thank you. <laughs> but I went all the way down to the place and blah, 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 and it's like, yeah, what if I got in a hairdresser who didn't notice about that or something? And it could have been bad. My hair is always an absolute mess. I could actually have my hair. I'm certain that 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 I could go with that special hair straightening whatever stuff. Have my hair professionally done up, and it would still be a complete and utter mess just because that's how my hair is. No matter how much I or anyone else tries to fix it up, it's immediately a mess. Spend like two hours brushing it and conditioning it and whatever. And it's not even like a day later. Like, immediately, it's still a frizzy mess. <laughs> Basically, I stand up and it goes back to how it was before we started. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like that episode of My Little Pony where Pinkie Pie was under the, uh, hairstyling thing and her hair immediately pooped up just as soon as it was removed yeah it's basically that also boy why are you in the girls washroom or bath house room it's kind of weird A little bit of hammers. So I guess in the next episode I'll be able to tell you all how the um how the inspection went. Again, I'm hoping that it's good. I'm hoping that's gonna be like fine, whatever. Use some uh Ooh, I wonder if I should order I wonder if I need to get new um scent things. I have was it plug in air freshener. But I don't think it's been working lately. So I wonder if it's run out. If I need to get some like new stuff for that. Yeah. Inspectors come in, it's like, oh, what's that 
weird smile. It's like, oh yeah, I made stew. I have stew. It's... It's in the slow cooker. It's like... What, are you gonna penalize me because you don't like the smell of stew? It's like, excuse me, this is my food. I am making my food. If you don't like it because it smells bad, that's a you problem. <laughs> You're not gonna try to tell me that I shouldn't be making stew. Now, if the smell is like big enough that it goes into other apartments or into the hall, then we might have an issue. I figure maybe take the vacuum, vacuum up the cat litter in the bathroom a little bit, which doesn't seem to be actually all that much uh, around. I checked. It's... Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't been that much since I cleaned up yesterday. the next level. So everything's probably close to being fine. Whatever. Good. Oh yeah, I still remember playing Room Factory 4 and I had a hotkey set up. So every time I got a new, like, skill point, just the ding, ding. Points needed to bring everything up to 99, just bring, bring. And I had debated on, uh, Points needed to bring everything up to 999, and I was all like, no flipping away, am I doing that? And what, maybe if I go to Moon Factory 4 again, should I try that? Not even so much uh, beating the game run, just bring all points, just bring all skills, just maximize all the skills. Oh dear gosh. Hey, look, another skill point. Farm up to 97. So close to level 45. Is my attack gonna go up? Stay the same, go up by one, go up by a, a few. Yeah, I was told, what, three months ago? Yeah, about three months ago that I was being put on the list for, like, monthly inspections. And that was back in, like, November, three months ago. They didn't do an inspection in December, because, I don't know, holiday season or something? Really don't know. Didn't do one in January. So it's really every three months inspection. It's like, it sure sounds like I complain about it a lot. It's like, how dare they come and make sure that, you know, the place that they own is actually being taken care of well. But it's just that, like, they have people living here who aren't capable of keeping jobs. And they expect us to mop the floor without leaving streaks. 
Like, I understand, like, hey, you have bottles, or, oh, hey, it stinks in here, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, fine. But I'm just still very ticked off about the, oh, there's, like, streaks on your floor from where you mopped it. You didn't mop it properly. It's like, my mop broke. I was doing what I could. I'm going to end this episode off decently early here. Just finish off the day. Going to go do some more cleaning. Maybe have some more stew. Ugh. That sort of thing. So. Ugh.